The best advice I got from Jim Rowan. Uh, I can't wait to share this with you guys. But first, we're going to take a few seconds to say hello to all the people in the chat, the inner circles. You'll see an IC next to their name. And also the super chatters. So hi, Bill. Hi, Matthew, my incredible son. Hey, Arthur. Hi, Lori. I don't know if you've been here before, but welcome. Hi, Jody. Hi, John. James. Sarah. That's Lucky Life. James. Mary, Kai, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be juicy. It's going to be awesome. Um, hi, Peter. Hey, Eric. Great to have you guys on here. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Robert Hollis. I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day. And today's title is really special for me. So Matthew, thanks for coming up with this. But it's the best advice I got from Jim Rowan. Now, the first time that I heard of Jim Rowan was 37 years ago. And the reason why is um, I had just discovered something called personal development. Now, for me, the very first thing it was, was, oh, my God, here's all these secrets. Here's all these things that these top one percenters are using that no one knows. In fact, there's a couple of things that I promote, including Jim Rowan. And people have never, ever, ever heard of him, ever heard of me, him. So I know that someone told me this. It probably was my mentor. And there was this place called Nightingale and Conant. And you could send them, I think it was a dollar or two dollars. And you could put the dollars and stuff in an envelope. I think about it now. What They didn't ask for a check. And you could mail an envelope to Chicago, Illinois. And... Uh, they would send you a calendar, I mean, a catalog. And when you got the catalog, not only did it have LPs, uh, of course, cassettes, because, uh, you know, we're, we're not in CDs yet, but it was like the best of the best personal development people. And it was just amazing. If you guys don't know this about Jim Rowan, uh, I'll share it with you in a quick story. Uh, and, and, you know, so there's a lot of people, Tony Robbins, that was Jim Rowan was Tony Robbins teacher, you know, Les Brown, uh, Zig Ziglar, you go on and on and on and on with some of the biggest personal development, emotional, you know, um, motivational speakers. He was just very humble and, and just loved hearing about him. So of course, 37 years ago, whatever he had published, whether it was his cassette programs, uh, uh, newsletters, whatever people were mailing newsletters back then, you know, I was on it and Bill, thank you very much, uh, for being a super chatter. The children are going to love it, man. Thank you so much. And so when I got into all of this stuff, and again, today, I was even telling a good friend of mine that, you know, around my birthday every year, one of the things I do is I actually listen to his audios all over again. And he's got one program um, that's just on network marketing. You know what I mean? And so some of the things that I just love is in hearing this story is, you know, when Jim Rowan died, um, it was really unexpected too. And all of a sudden what they did is they did a tribute to him uh, in LA. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get tickets. My son, Robert Hollis Jr. went. And uh, the who's who. Uh, you know, came up on stage and spoke. And uh, one of the things that I loved is, uh, you know, Les Brown, incredible motivational speaker. He was saying one time that, you know, he was first time he ever spoke in front of Jim Rowan. And one of the things that he did is while he was speaking, uh, he looked down at Jim Rowan's in the front row taking notes in his leather journal. And uh, all of a sudden, Les said it was just like, it's sort of making him crazy because he was going, hey, Jim, and, you know, Mr. Rowan, he goes, I don't understand why you're taking notes. He says, everything I'm teaching up here, I learned from you. And Jim Rowan's response was, and this is great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is great stuff. And so you know, when you really, really listen, another thing that I'll give my tribute to Jim Rowan was, uh, and I did a video, I, I'm sure it's out there someplace. Um, uh, but one of the things that I said was this guy is, in my opinion, the very best on what I call 
content per minute, content per minute. And I don't know if I've ever heard that phrase said out there, but me, I'm, I'm analytical. I'm a geek from the dork force. And I was just blown away until this day on how many things that Jim Rowan could say in a short phrase, like I'd rather work for profits instead of wages. You know, if you can't afford it, you can't afford not to. There's these all these one liners, you know, that are just uh, they're just amazing, you know. And so I could go on and on and on, you know, because there's hours and hours of stuff in my 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 heart and my soul, uh, my mind. And, I, you know, it, it's just amazing. So one of the things is, of course, I love the the uh, story about, um, you know, is that the wind in the world being life, the wind blows on us all. The wind blows on us all. And, and it blows the same amount on all of us. And the difference between one person and another is them learning to set their sails. Wow. So it's like everyone out there has, you know, you don't know how bad I got it. You don't know how bad I, my, my childhood was. You don't know how bad my last few years were. You know, listen, I, I don't want to upset you. But I promise you there's someone on this planet that has it worse than you. Not only do they have it worse than you, drastically worse than you, but today they're a winner. Today they're uh, uh, contributing. They're making an impact. They're, they're, they're scoring, you know, eights, if not tens in every category in life and going through things that were more difficult than yours. And see, those are the inspirational stories that I love. So, you know, the other one, of course, is the sower of the seed. I just love that. I know that I did a video on it. And it's it's that, again, that common thing that, you know, you you just keep sowing seeds and you keep sowing seeds. And, and sometimes it falls a parable of the sower. And sometimes it grows in thorns and gets choked out. And sometimes it's in shallow ground or on rock. And the sun burns it and kills it. It doesn't get nurtured well enough. And then the birds get them. Oh, my God, the birds get them. And it's like, uh, what? You know, a good mentor, a very good mentor, Yoda style, right? Are these people that say things to you that really honestly don't make sense at all. And most of the times that I heard these statements, it upset me. It pissed me off. It's not the answer to my question. <laughs> and so, of course, some seeds grow on fertile ground. I love the phrase that anybody can open up an apple, cut it open, and count the seeds. But only God knows how many apples are in, in every seed. And so, you know, a lot of people get involved in any kind of business to build an organization and they just plant a couple of seeds and the birds might get them or they might, you know, end up being choked out. So they quit. You know, it's not ever, hey, you need to plant 3000 seeds. If you walked up to a farmer today and say, how many seeds do you plant a year? A.B., are you kidding me? You know, millions and probably billions of seeds there. There's millions of seeds in every bag. You know what I mean? And so, again, understanding that you're not going to grow a harvest if you don't continue to plant seeds, that you just can't worry about it. So if a person doesn't show up or they quit or they go go do something else, it's like the birds got them. And so then the common question is the other thing that Jim Rowan would always say is, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't take that class. What? I just want to know why people find an incredible opportunity for free where they can earn enough income to take the despair away and eventually double and replace their income so they can have true freedom and teach other people. But these people won't do anything. And he's like, uh, if I were you, I wouldn't take that class. Everything's a mystery. You know, so people are always trying to find out the secret, the mystery. What is the real way of doing this business? And most people die still seeking for the answer. 
because they don't realize that it's them. You know what I mean? And Jim was also, Mr. Rowan was also one of those people that, you know, if you work harder on you than anything else, just work harder on you. Um, I love the phrase, work, work will out earn skill when skill doesn't work. Ah, man, great, 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 great stuff. Um, also, the whole concept of, uh, of um, seasons, you know, so when you look through life or you watch anyone's documentary, like I shared with on other videos where Terry and I watched Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary and Sylvester Stallone and, and you know, David um, Beckham, you know, you see these incredible uh, uh, stories. And what we're not willing to understand is how much ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs that every one of these people have gone through. And I love watching that because when all of a sudden you realize some of the biggest, famous, wealthiest people in the world had a lot of failures, which winners call lessons. See what I mean? They just say, you know, like Thomas Edison, I never failed in creating the light bulb. I just... I just learned a lesson. And by learning a lesson on all the lessons that I've learned, that came me to the point of creating the light bulb. Isn't that crazy? So you got other people, well, you know, I don't know enough to move forward. Uh, if you're an inventor or something that's never been created before, you're the first ones doing it, right? So there's a lot of people that have done a lot of things in this world where someone before them didn't do it. So that means that you just got to learn through going through lessons. And so with this up and down is the whole story of the seasons, right? That you really got to plant during the winters in your life. That's when you really work on personal development more than living in the valley of despair. You know, so when things are not going great for you, maybe this is the right time for you to work more on yourself so that you truly without any shadow of doubt, you know, the, the the faith is size of a mustard seed, that you have enough faith without doubt that you're moving forward because you have something to move forward to, right? I was just hearing the other day that uh, one of the really, really incredible things that, that uh, you know, Jim Rowan has done for me is, again, doing these stories in such a short word. And so one of them, I love this one. It's just one of the great ones. But Jim said uh, that he went over to Earl Schof. Earl Schof was his uh, uh, mentor. And he, there's very few audios online, but you can find them. Uh, and Earl Schof is the one that <laughs> would say to him, listen, you just got to go all in. You just got to jump in and go all in. And he's like, I can't afford to. And he goes, you can't afford not to. And Jim Rowan goes, you don't understand. I show you my amount of money I have. I don't have any money. This is all my employer pays me. And Earl Schof would say, um, so are you telling me everyone in the company that you work in, they all get paid the same amount of money? And Jim Rowan is like, of course not. So there's other people in your company that make more than you. Yeah. And how much do they make? Oh, my God, they make millions. And he goes, so why does that company pay them that much money and you only a little bit of money? Ouch. Ouch. And, of course, Jim Rowan being a very coachable, you know, learning student, uh, said, why? And, and Earl Schoff said, they're more valuable. That the more valuable that you become, the more people will pay you. Damn. And, and so, you know, it, it's just these kind of stories that the other one where uh, uh, Jim Rowan tells the story of him going over to his mentor's house. And so he knocks on the door and his wife answers. And he says, hey, listen, He's out in the backyard. So Jim Rowan walks out in the backyard and he looks at this backyard and it's like, you know, something out of a, an Asian garden. You know what I mean? It's got 
you know, something that you would have in, in Mr. Mr. Miyagi's. Mr. Miyagi's. <laughs> you see that up there. Mr. Miyagi's backyard, right? And um, right away, Jim Rowan said, wow, what an amazing, beautiful backyard. And Earl Shove said, no, what a wonderful, beautiful backyard. God has really blessed you. God has really blessed you. And Earl Schultz's response was, wow, you should have seen this backyard when God had it all to himself. <laughs> and so it's these constant, I've seen people post some of their um, uh, very best uh, stories in, in here. You know, it's a, uh, thank you for sharing that one, Peter. Uh, you know, uh, James, thank you very much for being a super chatter. The children, the orphans are going to love it. Thank you. And so the Girl Scout story is just amazing because this is all about the day, the day that you draw a line in the sand and saying, I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to get pissed off. I'm not living like this anymore. I'm going to stuff it to every person that told me that I couldn't do this. I'm going to make everyone regret, you know, get upset. And so a Girl Scout knocks on Jim Rowan's door. He opens it and immediately tells the little girl, hey, listen, I'm, I'm very sorry. I've already purchased some cookies. And so she says, well, thank you, sir, for supporting the Girl Scouts and turned around and walked off. And when he shut the door, he goes, I don't have the money to buy the Girl Scout cookies, and I just lied to a Girl Scout because I made stupid decisions, and I thought the wrong thoughts, and I was really good at beating myself up. How low, how low can you be to lie to a little girl, a Girl Scout that's trying to raise money for their, for their troop? I'm done. I'm done. I am not living like this freaking anymore. I'm done. And it's moments like that that Jim Rowan talked about where you put a look to draw on this line in the sand and you stop making excuses and you stop blaming and you stop, oh, woe is me, you know, being, you know, blaming everyone and hopeless despair or hopeless, you know, it, it's just uninspired you're you know it's i'm stuck in all this bullshit that we keep going on in a story in our mind of why we can't be great why we can't you know do better at least eat a little bit each and every day and so the last one of course i, I i'm going to share with you is of course i personally knew jim rowan and got to spend time with him personal time and uh you know just sitting there in awe just sitting there in awe, just, you know, constantly asking questions. And uh, this was probably about uh, a year before he died. And uh, yeah, it rocked us, man. When we, there was some kind, I don't remember the disease, but it, it was, it was something that really, uh, it, it hardened this, the, the, the sacs, the air sacs in his lungs. It, it, it just hardened them like petrified or something. I don't remember what it was. And, um, but he said to me, he says, Robert, listen, um, one day this is going to happen to you. And when he said this to me, I believed him. See, if I said this to you or Jim Rowan, if he was alive, said this to you, would you believe him? Would you? And he goes, Robert, listen, he goes, one day, one day you're going to walk into a room or you're going to be in an airport or you're going to be in a hallway or a lobby of a hotel. And he says, you're going to hear, there he is. There he is. That's that guy. That's Robert Hollis. That's the guy right there. Or maybe in an elevator. And I was going like, what? And he goes, yeah, you got to vision that. And it happened over and over and over again. 
it was because of people like Jim Rowan that got there before us. You know, that's one of the people I talk about where I'm standing on the shoulders of giants that, you know, came before me. And um, yeah, it was just amazing. And then, of course, the one that uh, I'm going to have difficulty talking about <laughs> is uh, he goes, Robert, do you know you die twice in your life? I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, one day you're going to take your last breath on this planet. And that's one way you die. Another time you die, it was if no one ever says your name again. And he goes, Robert, just keep pushing. Make sure that you make such an impact on people's lives that when you're no longer here, they keep mentioning your name. Oh my God, do you know what Robert Hollis did for me? Have you seen this Robert Hollis video? Have you seen some of his Hollisisms? <laughs> you know, if what you know that you know that you know isn't so, when would you like to know? It, it was the inspiration from people like Jim Rowan that, that said those things to me that continue to drive me every single day, every single day. So, uh, that's some of the best advice I got from Jim Rowan. Matthew, I dedicate this to you. And I also dedicate it to Jim Rowan. Uh, and uh, Matt came up with the idea. So I love and appreciate you guys. If no one's ever told you or given you permission that you can be happy and fulfilled, you can be successful, whatever that definition is, let me give you that permission. Let me tell you that if I can do it, you can do it. No doubt in my mind. So I love and appreciate you and do me a huge personal favor. Share this video with other people and hopefully there's something, one of those little things, little nuggets uh, that will hit you and uh, your life will change forever. Your perspective will change. Your thoughts will change. Uh, your paradigm will change. It's just really amazing. And P.S., right? Uh, another one that just came to my mind is I was listening to Jim Rowan's um, audio. And he says, listen, I learned to be a potato farmer. I, 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 I just didn't want to do that. Then I was downtown one time. I seen this guy driving a Cadillac. I asked him what he did. And he said, sales. And so I said, can you teach me? And then he said, I, I made good money, good money being in sales. And then he said, I met my mentor, Errol Schulf. And he said, Robert, listen, you can make a fortune if you learn how to help others make money. Bam. So when Jim Rowan says that I should focus on building a group of followers and subscribers and help other people supplement and, and, and put an extra two, $500,000 in their pocket, that's why I've been doing this forever. He did it. He taught other people to do it. He was the master trainer for Herbalife for years. And um, yeah, so that's P.S. So again, thank you very much. Share this video with others. Make sure you look for uh, Jim Rowan Network Marketing. And I don't know if Craig posted it in the group, but it, it's a pretty amazing thing. It's something that I wish people would memorize. Memorize. Because then you wouldn't have to send me uh, messages saying, you know, did you see what this guy said? What would you do in this? Because I just want to tell you, you know what? If I were you, I wouldn't take that class. I love you. And I'll talk to you on the next video soon. Bye for now.